The Pleiadians, a star cluster in the constellation Taurus, have captivated human imagination for millennia. Their prominence in various ancient cultures and their association with extraterrestrial life have fueled countless theories and speculations. But does the Bible, one of the most influential religious texts, offer any clues about these celestial bodies? Stay with us till the end to find out as we delve into the biblical text to explore if there are any references to the Pleiadians. Stories of Powerful Beings There are ancient stories full of mystery and power that speak of beings not from Earth but from the heavens. In the Bible, there are hints of these powerful ones, divine or mysterious figures who interacted with humanity in ancient times. At the same time, the Sumerians, one of the oldest known civilizations, had their own legends about the Anunnaki, a group of sky people or gods who, according to their records, descended to earth from the stars. The stories of the Bible and the Sumerian tablets both whisper about these powerful figures who shaped the early history of humanity. The Anunnaki, according to the Sumerians, were powerful beings who played a huge role in the creation of human civilization. They were described as tall, majestic, and wise, capable of shaping the earth and guiding humanity. Some legends even claim that the Anunnaki came from another planet, arriving on earth to mine resources and using humans as their workers. These stories are filled with drama, conflict, and cosmic events that seem far beyond our world. But the Bible also speaks of sky people and powerful beings. Ancient texts mention divine visitors and encounters with beings who were more than human, Yet over time, something happened to these stories. The Hebrew texts, which form the foundation of the Bible, once contained mentions of other gods and entities, like Asherah and Baal. These were powerful figures that the ancestors of the Hebrews worshipped or interacted with in the distant past. Asherah, for instance, was seen as a mother goddess, often connected to fertility and creation. She was sometimes described as the partner or consort of Yahweh, the Hebrew god. Baal, on the other hand, was a storm god, a figure of strength and power, worshipped by many neighboring cultures in the ancient Near East. These entities were not just myths, they were deeply woven into the religious practices of the time. The priests who could read these ancient Hebrew texts knew about these stories. They knew that their ancestors believed in multiple gods and divine beings, many of whom were believed to have directly interacted with humans. But as time passed, the story of Yahweh, the one God, became the dominant narrative. The texts had to be edited, shaped, and changed to create the impression that Yahweh was always the one and only God, from the beginning to the end. This editing process, like a careful airbrushing, erased or minimized the presence of other powerful entities in the Hebrew tradition. References to Asherah, Baal, and other gods were removed or rewritten to make it seem as though Yahweh was the only divine being. The stories of paleo-contact, early encounters with otherworldly beings, were slowly hidden, leaving behind a seamless tale of one god who watched over humanity. But even with this editing, traces of the older stories remain. In some parts of the Bible, there are strange and cryptic references to beings who come from the sky, to sons of God who take human wives, and to powerful entities that seem beyond human understanding. These fragments hint at a time when the Hebrew people may have believed in a more complex and cosmic reality, one where humans were not alone, but part of a larger universe filled with beings of immense power. The Story of Tel El Fara The stories of the Anunnaki and the ancient Hebrew gods remind us that in the distant past, people believed that the universe was full of life and power. They looked up at the stars and believed that beings from other realms had come to Earth, influencing humanity in ways we can only imagine. While much of this has been edited or forgotten, the ancient texts still hold pieces of these stories, pieces that continue to captivate and intrigue us today. Who were these powerful ones, and what was their true relationship with humanity? Were they gods, extraterrestrial beings, or something else entirely? There was story of Tel El Farah, a mysterious and windswept plateau, sits high in the rugged mountain country of ancient Samaria, just seven miles northeast of Nablus in Palestine. This stony expanse covering 45 acres is a place where the past whispers its secrets to the present. 
Since the 1940s, this land has been an important archaeological site, revealing layers of history hidden beneath its rocky surface. For three decades, Holland de Voor, the dedicated director of the École Biblique et Archéologique Française, led the way in exploring this ancient place. With passion and determination, he launched a major excavation that would open up a remarkable window into the real world of the Bible. This site, once filled with life and stories, began to give up its treasures, offering a glimpse into the ancient past, a time when the people of the Bible walked the earth. Under Devor's leadership, Tel El Farah became more than just a place of rocks and ruins. It became a doorway into the minds of the ancient Hebrews, allowing us to see what they saw, think what they thought, and imagine what they imagined. The excavation uncovered a staggering collection of physical artifacts that told the story of this long-lost world. There were buildings, standing as silent witnesses to the lives that once bustled within them. Their walls and foundations spoke of the ancient architecture, built with the hands of people who lived in a time far beyond our own. But it wasn't just the buildings that captured the imagination. The site revealed decorations and carvings, intricate works of art that adorned these ancient spaces. These carvings, etched with care, seemed to tell stories of their own, stories of gods, rulers, and daily life. There were ornaments, delicate and beautiful, once worn by the people who lived here, perhaps as symbols of status or protection. Jewelry, too, was uncovered, glittering reminders of a world where beauty and craftsmanship were prized. And then there were the figurines. These small, mysterious statues, crafted by ancient hands, held immense significance. Some were depictions of animals, others of human-like figures, and still others of beings that seemed otherworldly. These figurines gave us a glimpse into what the ancient Hebrews might have believed about the cosmos, about the divine, and about the powerful beings they referred to as Elohim. Who were these Elohim? Were they gods, angels, or beings from another realm? The figurines didn't answer the question directly but they hinted at a deep ancient connection to something larger than themselves, something powerful and awe-inspiring. The discoveries at Tel El Farah have shown us what the ancient Hebrews were seeing when they looked at the world around them. These were the sites that filled their imaginations as they wrote their sacred texts, spoke of their gods, and recounted the stories that would one day become the Bible. The artifacts offer clues to the thoughts that swirled in their minds when they spoke of the Elohim, these powerful beings from the deep past who, according to their beliefs, played a role in the creation of the world. As the excavation progressed, each artifact became a piece of a puzzle, slowly revealing the bigger picture of life in ancient Samaria. It was a time when people lived close to the earth, but their thoughts reached toward the heavens. They built their homes in the shadow of mountains, but they spoke of gods who dwelled in the sky. They carved their beliefs into stone and clay, leaving behind a legacy that we are only now beginning to fully understand. Holland de Vore's work at Tel El Farah brought this ancient world back to life, and the artifacts he uncovered allow us to step into the shoes of the ancient Hebrews. The Reform the Zulu people, one of Africa's oldest cultures, speak of a being called Bab Wanawarisa. This mysterious figure is said to have taught their ancestors the crucial skills of farming and brewing, knowledge that shaped their way of life. It wasn't just about planting crops or making drinks. It was about survival, about transforming the earth into something that could sustain a community. Bab Wanawarisa's teachings were passed down through generations becoming woven into the very fabric of Zulu traditions. Similarly, far away in ancient Sumeria, there is a story of Shamhat, a wise woman who transformed the life of a wild man named Enkidu. In Sumerian legend, Enkidu lived like an animal until Shamhat introduced him to agriculture, the art of preparing sophisticated foods, and the ways of urban life. She opened his eyes to a world of civilization, showing him how to live in harmony with the land while also embracing the luxuries of city life. Her influence turned Enkidu into a symbol of the power of education and transformation. These stories share a common thread, the idea of advanced knowledge being passed down by wise teachers, perhaps not of this world. Some believe that these ancient figures, Babwana Warisa, Shamat, and others, 
were not just ordinary humans, but beings from beyond the stars, specifically from the Pleiades. But the stories of teachers from the Pleiades are not limited to the Middle East or Africa. The Cherokee, a Native American tribe, also speak of beings from the Pleiades who came to Earth to teach their people the ways of agronomy, how to grow crops and live in harmony with the land. In Aboriginal Australian traditions, similar beings from the Pleiades are said to have shared their wisdom about the land and the stars, guiding their communities through the knowledge of the natural world. All these cultures, separated by vast distances and different languages, seem to point back to the same source, a group of advanced beings, possibly from the Pleiades, who came to Earth to share their knowledge. The standing stones found in places like Bethel are believed by some to mark these ancient contacts. These stones, tall and silent, reach toward the sky, symbolizing a connection between the heavens and the Earth, between humanity and these advanced beings. They stand as quiet witnesses to a time when the lines between humans and gods were blurred, when the wisdom of the stars flowed freely among the people. However, over time, this memory began to fade. In ancient Israel, during the reigns of kings like Josiah, there was a shift toward monotheism, a belief in only one God, Yahweh. King Josiah of ancient Judah was a young boy of only eight years old when he became king. His reign, however, would mark a dramatic turning point in the history of Judaism. What sparked this transformation was an extraordinary discovery during the renovations of the temple in Jerusalem, a long-lost text known as the Book of the Laws of Yahweh. This mysterious book, which appeared unexpectedly, laid out rules for life, worship, and the relationship between the people and their God, Yahweh. Its origins were unclear, but it became the foundation for how right and wrong were defined in the kingdom. This book gave Josiah the divine authority to carry out sweeping reforms. It was as if the laws within it legitimized his rule, strengthening his connection to the divine. Yet Josiah's rule was not one of unchallenged authority. Being so young, it's likely that older advisors and priests heavily influenced his decisions, shaping the religious and political directions of the kingdom. One of Josiah's boldest decisions was his choice of Yahweh as the sole focus of worship. Before his reforms, the religious landscape of Judah was far more diverse. The people had long worshipped not only Yahweh, but also other deities, including Baal and Asherah. Asherah in particular was a powerful and ancient figure, often seen as a mother goddess and partner to Yahweh in earlier traditions. Temples, altars, and sacred objects dedicated to her were common throughout the land. But Josiah was determined to change all that. In what can be seen as a dramatic simplification of the religion, Josiah made it his mission to remove all traces of these other gods and goddesses. He ordered the destruction of idols, altars, and any items associated with the worship of Baal and Asherah. Sacred groves where people had once prayed to Asherah were cut down. The many gods that had been part of the daily lives of the people were erased from official worship. Under Josiah's leadership, Judaism was transformed into a monotheistic religion, focused solely on Yahweh. These reforms were not just about religion. They were deeply political as well. By centralizing worship around Yahweh, Josiah also centralized power. The removal of other deities helped strengthen his control over the kingdom, aligning his rule with the divine law outlined in the Book of the Laws of Yahweh. In doing so, Josiah ensured that his leadership was seen as divinely sanctioned, with no rival gods to challenge his authority. However, Josiah's dramatic transformation of the religion did not happen overnight. The people of Judah had long been accustomed to a rich, varied spiritual life, filled with many gods and rituals. For generations, they had worshipped Asherah alongside Yahweh, seeing her as an essential part of their spiritual understanding of the world. The removal of these traditions was not easy, and many resisted or mourned the loss of their ancient customs. Still, Josiah's reforms had a lasting impact. By purging other deities from worship and centering the religion around Yahweh alone, Josiah laid the groundwork for the form of Judaism that would survive through the centuries. His actions helped shape the religion into a monotheistic faith that would influence millions around the world. But what of the young king himself? While he made these sweeping changes, the fact remains that Josiah was just a boy when he took the throne. Much of his early rule was guided by older, more experienced men, 
priests, advisors, and scribes who may have had their own motives for promoting these reforms. Whether Josiah fully understood the depth of the changes he was making, or whether he was simply carrying out the will of those around him, remains a mystery. What is clear, however, is that Josiah's reforms left a profound mark on the history of Judaism and the ancient world. By removing Asherah, Baal, and other deities from the religious landscape, he redefined what it meant to worship in Judah. His actions set the stage for the monotheistic beliefs that still exist today. Yet the stories remain, carvings on stone, tales passed down through generations, myths that still echo in the traditions of the Zulu, the Sumerians, the Cherokee, and the Aboriginal Australians. These stories serve as a reminder of a time when the wisdom of the stars was shared with humanity, a time when beings from the Pleiades may have walked among us, teaching us how to shape the world around us. And though much of this history has been lost or forgotten, it lingers in the stories we tell, waiting to be remembered. The Pleiadian Source in the Bible In the Bible, particularly in the ancient book of Job, there is mention of the Pleiades. Job is often considered one of the oldest texts in the Bible, and in this book, celestial bodies like Sirius, Orion, and the Pleiades are referenced. These star clusters are not just mentioned in passing, the text hints that they have some form of influence or power over the earth. In Job 38.31, God speaks to Job and asks, Can you bind the chains of the Pleiades or loosen the belt of Orion? This verse suggests a kind of mystery and power associated with these stars. The Pleiades, often called the Seven Sisters, are a group of stars that have fascinated humans for thousands of years. Many cultures across the world have looked up at the Pleiades and woven their own stories and myths about these distant stars. But what's particularly interesting is that in various cultures, not just in the Bible, these celestial regions like Sirius, Orion, and the Pleiades are often linked to stories of ancient visitors from the stars. In many ancient traditions, these regions are said to be the home of beings who once came to Earth. Some of these visitors were believed to be nurturing, guiding humanity, sharing knowledge, and helping people evolve. Others were thought to be more exploitative, using humanity for their own purposes, whether for power, resources, or control. In ancient times, the stars were seen as more than just distant lights in the sky. People believed they had real, tangible power over the world below. The Bible, by mentioning these star clusters, taps into that sense of awe and mystery. When Job is asked about the Pleiades and Orion, it's as if the text is reminding him and the reader that there are forces far greater than humans, cosmic powers that we may not fully understand but that play a role in the grand design of the universe. Throughout history, the Pleiades have been associated with the idea of cosmic visitors. Many cultures believed that the Pleiades were the birthplace of powerful beings, or even gods who visited Earth in the distant past. These beings were sometimes seen as wise and benevolent, helping to guide human civilization, while others were viewed as more controlling, possibly even manipulating human progress for their own gain. The idea that the Bible might indirectly hint at these ancient visitors is fascinating. While the text doesn't explicitly mention beings from the stars coming to Earth, the reference to these powerful celestial regions suggests that the people of the time felt a connection to the stars, and perhaps believed in forces or beings beyond the Earth. The ancient Hebrews, like many other cultures, saw the stars as part of a larger, interconnected universe, where the divine and the mortal were intertwined. This suggests that the ancient visitors mentioned in the myths and stories of different cultures who nurtured or exploited humanity could have been the same beings referenced in the Bible and other ancient texts, seen as gods, angels, or even cosmic messengers. So, while the Bible does not directly mention the Pleiadians as we understand them today, its reference to the Pleiades opens the door to intriguing possibilities. Could the chains of the Pleiades mentioned in Job be a metaphor for the influence of ancient beings from the stars? Were the Pleiades and other star systems the home of visitors who shaped early human history? The answer to these questions remains a mystery, but the fact that the Pleiades were significant enough to be mentioned in one of the Bible's oldest books shows that ancient people were deeply aware of the stars and may have felt a connection to forces far beyond the Earth.
The Pleiades continue to capture the imagination of people across time and space. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time if you are still with me and if you would like, please think about subscribing to our channel. You may then receive updates on new videos that will provide you with additional knowledge, manifestations, philosophy, and personal development ideas. Your thoughts and opinions regarding this video would be much appreciated. Your contribution stimulates our cosmic research, and we are incredibly appreciative of your being here. And never forget that we are always here for you and wish you the best possible life filled with success and happiness. I hope you have an amazing day. If you have watched until the end, please respond with MMM, Master Motivational Mindset, so we can connect.